These are the five belief systems that may get you stuck, and I'm going to share with you how to reframe them. My name is Skylar Lewis, and this is the Christian Business Mentor Podcast. I've worked with so many people, and what I've heard, I've heard these five common belief systems. And belief systems, they arise in language. They come out in language when you're talking to somebody. A belief system either opens up or closes down possibility. So you always want to question your belief systems. So let's start with number one. I don't have time. I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to connect with my kids because I'm busy at work. I don't have time to eat healthy because I'm busy during the day. What's your I don't have time excuse? The belief that you don't have time is a lie. And what I like to do is I like to question belief systems. And I ask, is that true? Maybe the reframe is maybe you actually do have the time. You're just not making time for that. Maybe you're not making time to connect with your kids or making time to eat healthy or making time to work out. We'll do the things that we believe are the highest priority. And if you believe you don't have time, it closes down possibility and you won't find the time. We have the ability to make a lot of things happen, but we have to be really thoughtful with our priorities. We have time for our top priorities. So maybe it's actually not a top priority in your life. Number two is, This should be easier. Is that true? Should your marriage be easier? Should your business be easier? Should raising your kids be easier? And again, I like to ask the question, is that true? So the belief this should be easier is actually a lie also. James 1, 2, 3, and 4 talks about trials and challenges and how those make us better. So maybe it's actually supposed to be exactly the way it is. Maybe your marriage is supposed to be challenging because it's refining you and your wife. Maybe your relationship with your kids is challenging because it's giving you patience. It's refining you, right? So the hard things actually improve us if we have a good mindset about it. If we go victim to it, then we'll struggle with anger, resentment, and just have a poor experience. So this should be easier. Eh, I don't know about that. Maybe it's not supposed to be easier. I hope you're enjoying this video. I'm the founder of Rise Up Kings, the largest faith-based personal development organization in the country. And it's our mission to reach as many people as possible to help them live lives of excellence, all to glorify God. We do this through our content that you're watching now. We do this through our seminars. So if you're enjoying this, please subscribe and share. Let's get back to the video. Number three is, this is happening to me. Why is this happening to me, right? So life either happens to you or it happens for you. And so the belief that things are happening to you is a very destructive belief and is actually a victim belief. So when you believe something's happening to you, you are the victim to that. This person's doing this to you. Your client is doing this to you. Your wife is not giving you what you need. Your kids are doing this to you. The economy is happening to you. Life is happening to me. That's a victim mentality. So what if life was actually happening for you? And so that one belief shift from this is happening to me to this is happening for me. And then you can start to find evidence of, hey, why maybe maybe this is happening for me. Why could this be happening for me? That will give you peace as opposed to anxiousness. Number four is I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. And so the challenge and the problem with this belief is this is a shame belief. So what is the difference between shame and guilt? Shame is something's wrong with me. Guilt is I did something wrong. And so this specific belief is I shouldn't have done that is inherently saying something's wrong with you. I shouldn't have done that. Well, it was probably not the wisest thing to do that, right? The mistake that you made or or the business decision that went south or the partnership or whatever it is, and you made it. So Satan uses this to keep people in shame and guilt cycles and spirals. So when you keep believing, man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. That keeps you in a place of shame, which will actually keep you trapped. If you did it, it was meant to happen because it happened. So if you did it, it was meant to happen because it happened. So stop resisting what is. What is, is that you messed up on that decision. Cool. 
Now, where do you go? Now, what do you go do to rectify that decision? What do you go do to improve yourself so that doesn't happen again? If you stay in shame, you tend to make the same experiences happen over and over again. So when you mess up on something, instead of going, man, I shouldn't have done this. Don't even go there to say, Hey, I mess, I messed up on this. That's a fact. I shouldn't have done this is a belief. I messed up on this is an actual fact. I shouldn't have done this is a belief that's saying, Hey, I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. And the more you have that belief, the more you'll get stuck in that same trap in that same cycle. So I shouldn't have done this. Actually, no, maybe you were supposed to do that because you're going to learn some lesson that will serve you for the rest of your life. Number five is they should be different. So this belief gets so many people trapped. Is your wife supposed to be different? Are your kids, are they supposed to be different? Right? Is your business partner or a team member supposed to be different? So they should be different. And again, I ask the question, is that true? Is it true that they're not supposed to be doing that? So believing that people around you should be different traps you and hurts the relationship because you're always going to have an expectation about this person and you'll be consistently let down, which will lead to resentment. So what if they actually shouldn't be different? What if they are exactly the way they're supposed to be? What if your wife is exactly however she is, all of her strengths, all of her faults, or your husband, all of his, all of his weaknesses, all of his strengths? What if he's actually supposed to be exactly the way he is? Because that is the way he is. So stop fighting what is. If what is, right, your spouse or a partner or a team member is challenging, don't fight what is. Learn to accept what is and then make a change if needed, if you have the ability to make a change. So don't fight what is, right? If you're having a health problem or you're disappointed because somebody else is living their life, let's say you have a child that's living their life in a way that's not effective or not glorifying God, believing they should be different is a very ineffective belief and will cause you to have resentment towards that person. So actually the real belief is, Hey, maybe they're supposed to be exactly the way they are because they're on their own personal journey. And God knows a lot more than you do. Again, if you can reframe these five beliefs, these five beliefs that I've seen so many people, it, it creates anxiousness and ineffectiveness in their life. If you can reframe them, you can start to live a life that glorifies God at a high level. And the critical part of this is question the belief systems, especially if they are not serving you and not serving the people around you and not serving the kingdom, which you are a part of. Our goal is to help more people live lives that glorify God. Let's continue to refine our belief systems.